Hello, here we are at Karakrori, the tree labyrinth. I haven't presented an update of the tree labyrinth for some time. It is kind of late, it's just quarter to nine, I believe. Uh, the sun is just setting over there. So I think we've got enough light just to get around here and I'll show you the latest of how things are in the tree labyrinth. And here we go approaching the Christmas tree and very good year for the blueberries. They're large this year, fairly ripe. But we're not really at the beginning yet. Winter heather is out. St John's wort, huge bush there. And hazel, lots of hazel everywhere. And mixed in with logan berries, but I don't see much in the way of logan berries forming. There's little evidence. And I really can't, it's just little buds, not really easy to see on the video. Here's the entrance. I have a lot of work to do training these upper branches to keep weaving uh, into making this pathway here. Apples there, but no apples on it. And as we go through the willow arch here, this part I'm going to have to work on. Probably cut it away, make poles. I've got replacement willows. Not sure if it'll be a job I do in September. I'll wait until the spring. Now uh, there's the ladder where I've actually been working uh, on the willow cairn here, doing weavings up above. Because last year, last May, last year, the whole lot actually collapsed in a gale uprooted after a month of rain. So I've been working on this. So we start going through and I left the cap there. Sort of mowed the grass here. Lots of oregano there in flower. And copper beech. And that's an English hawthorn. And moving on through here. And the the birches are going brown. I suppose with all the cold weather that uh, it thinks that now we're heading into the fall, into autumn, but the alders, very green, very much green on the whole. We have an apple tree here. I forget the species, but it's caught some kind of blight. It's the only one here that has. I'm not really going to do anything about it. I'm very reluctant to actually treat things. I always think well, if a disease comes along it's just part of the process. I'm not relying on the apples. There's plenty of healthy plants here. I don't want to interfere at this stage. The orders are getting very tall. I'll probably have to start clipping. I could do with some of the poles anyway. And various willows. There's lots of orders and willows because this gets very wet. So it needs trees to actually drink the water that's here. And it does a very good job. This is an apple tree that was a little diseased. I cut that one back. That's a Worcester. And so carry on walking through. the. As you see, the trees have really grown a lot through this summer, especially the alders and the hazels. And you'll see that later on that the oaks are much greater. Some of the hazels are slow, like that one. Crab apples doing fairly well, although this one doesn't have as many as some of the plants have. We'll see, have a look at some that's got more crab apples on. And a twisted hazel is getting very twisted. Back to those blueberries again. And this part is really growing, but then this is this is where the blackest, richest soil is. And we have a two-tone beech. I don't know what happened here. We have green leaves mm -hmm. and we have the sort of purpley ones here. So uh, copper ones. So that's quite intriguing. 
uh, how that happened cross pollination I suppose lots of brambles here I'm not so sure about the blueberries I think with the growth of trees this summer the sun just doesn't got into here so I don't think there's going to be much in the way of berries I'm just gonna have to cut way back again cut them way back oh, healthy willows uh, another apple tree that's healthy but I don't see any oh no that's a plum tree that's a plum tree but no plums and there's a little bit of a sparse all of them. some of them do this they come out with lots of fruit lots of uh, the cones and uh, various catkins and I find when they do this they it's really saying okay we've had enough that's our days done and I might find this is the end of the road for that one uh, but there's plenty of orders here those catkins will just disappear somewhere and create more orders I got a lot of wild order plants everywhere and here's a, a lovely Cecil oak doing very well it's actually growing quite a bit this year and you'll see that's a wild order that's just gone wild but all of the back here is great but it hides that electric pole without interfering with it so I'm very pleased with that more hawthorn and this is lovely how this has come out like a large hedge it's willow with alders all uh, combined together and this is a delight this is a white poplar and uh, it's the only one I have I, there were a few here but somehow they didn't adapt to here but this one it took a while and now this year it's really taken off it's rooted well and I'm pleased because there was for two years it kept falling over in gales but it's now made itself at home very well established a uh, more alders as I say very important here and intermingled with all this is this birch that's shoved in between the alders and willows here and I, I just love this is a downy birch and I love the way it twists and it just somehow still at home here and this is not really natural for this because when uh, a birch gets crowded like this it usually decides okay my job is done I've pioneered a woodland so that's it I'll go away but that one still seems very happy uh, as it is it's about six years old anyway and then I've got some chives that have gone mad it was beautiful when the flowers were out obviously strange hazel this one is about six years old but it's not doing anything but it's still alive it'll probably uh, surprise me because I've got hazels here like this one that was like that one they were planted at the same time and then this year it's decided to take off you just don't know what's going to happen in here and I'll continue on here and uh, a robin is getting very interested as they do thinks I'm going to be pulling up some kind of worm or some kind of food oh no is that a robin that's something else isn't it come on bird people tell me what we got here <laughs> all right uh, oh this is a pride and joy uh, this is a Oh dear, I've uh, forgotten the actual name. This is uh, a rare white bean. This is a white bean. Uh, so I'm, I'm uh, very pleased to have that one in the labyrinth here. And that is a willow looking like a willow, weeping away there. And then we have Melissa, the lemon balm. There's various herbs around here. I'll just have to remind myself to poke these the camera down a bit. Uh, moving around this hazel is doing quite well this is only two years old and uh, it's quite damp here but it likes it uh, it's more winter heather <clears throat> uh, 
and we have one of the two horse chestnuts luckily they haven't picked up the disease that is all around Ireland uh, this the brown is just the normal browning that happens this time of year it seems quince here is also losing its leaves it's definitely getting a little bit too autumny too quickly and there's more order cones This is a, a red oak, but it's not going red yet. So that's a good sign. That doesn't think it's autumn yet. And heather that hasn't come out. So the heather is very choosy. And we have one Worcester apple <laughs> uh, on that one. Uh, and as we continue along here, more hazel, more alder, and that's the completion of the first part, the pagation, where we get rid of all our baggage, come back to the center, where hopefully we're all very inspired. So let's see what we got in this part one thing that hasn't been reluctant because anim animals come in here and eat them uh, is the rowans well, I'm not having a good job vision well they're so small very difficult to get in the camera but this one has taken off this summer this one has decided it's got lots of life and doing very well there this twisted hazel has decided to untwist itself so I'm going to let it do its own thing there. There's still a bit of twisty there. Horticulturalists will tell me that I should cut that away, but I'm not. I'm just going to let it be as it is. Uh, more, I love the colors of these, more blueberries here. They're a little smaller, I think. Oh, and beautiful. This is a very beautiful uh, downy birch. I love the shape of these. They're so delicate. I just love those trees. And this is the other horse chestnut, which is more dramatic than the one over the other side. It's already, if I can get this, well, there we are. It's, it's got its sticky buds ready for next year already. And let's see. If we can find the famous horseshoes, it's a little bit fuzzy, isn't it? One trying to home in on, you know, it's because it's so, it's nearly sunset, we can't get it, but each of those there, if I can point it out, there's seven nobles, those, and uh, they, that's why there's seven nails uh, in a horseshoe, inspired by the horse chestnut. Oh, that's how the horse chestnut got its name. Uh, oh, look at this one. This is this is crab apples with no leaves. <laughs> this is uh, that's intriguing. Uh, it's almost very decorative. Uh, well, that's inspiring. Uh, well, at least there's going to be food on that. And this is one of the bigger willows. This is just gone mad it's got a wide trunk this is like a mature tree and more apples a red oak that's starting to go red and more oh, we got one or two apples that survived and they're tiny tiny blueberries almost like the bilberries another oak that needs weeding and well this is my delight I love this this is actually an import tree it is an alder if you look at the bark it's an alder bark but look at the leaves the shiny green leaves very different to say this 
all of the look at the leaves there that's the native Irish order and this is different look it's because it's uh, from Nepal Nepalese order I had four of them but three of them got killed off one winter but this one is doing okay it's doing very well I think we'll be fine with it so what's next is that intriguing I think that for some reason that's the prettiest willow I try and stop it climbing tall so I do I must admit I clip the top off and I use the poles I find or oh, the Auradon willow poles I find very useful I use them in the veggie garden uh, f for peas and beans and also for putting aside for mm -hmm. making more um, raised beds uh, there's all kinds of uses for the poles nothing gets wasted and here's another set of blueberries leaves are going blueberries will be ripe soon and hazels no hazels uh, there's no actual hazelnuts this year two years ago when we had a, a really good summer all these little hazels gave lots of nuts as thick as the blueberries that I've been showing you but not a single nut this year and a Japanese willow very ornate to have a straight stem there and a bushy top and more blueberries and a very deeper color uh, winter heather there and this is a very clustered area another very very healthy red oak I've been trimming this a bit otherwise people wouldn't be able to walk around here it's a tight corner as it is and this apple tree is no apples because it's not getting any light but it's in between the willows that form the archway there uh, the, that's mulberry here but there's never been any mulberries uh, on that one and fennel oh goodness me the fennel has gone to seed there's not much fennel on it but it was very beautiful a couple of months ago I think it's still beautiful really but it's quite unique in its own way and going through more massive alders this is definitely all of the country uh, and we have a very clustered it's almost like a bonsai hawthorn there and uh, interesting shape of sisal oak here we have a cluster there a bit of branch and another cluster there so this take on taken on a very unique shape more melissa great bunch there and some more over there and then we have some white heather coming out here that'll be out very shortly so do you know i forgot what we've got here this is something okay horticulturalist what have i got here it's very strange it has a cluster there that looks different to here i'll have to look at that something in the labyrinth that i can't identify maybe it was a present from someone there's a lot of people that drop off presents here and this is another white beam i believe oh and i love this combination it's very deep red winter heather and we have some lavender here and we have oregano this is definitely the herb corner everything is very much alive and john please put your tools away and we're into the sage area this is louisiana sage which actually has done better than the local sage i i'm always pulling this for cooking it's amazing how much i can pull and have pulled and this one can make smudging sticks it makes very good smudging sticks so very happy with that one this is an oak that's slow it'll pick up one day and it's strange it's near the fertile cluster there and here's one that's changing color uh it thinks it's autumn are we in a bit of a cold corner here i wonder and uh, oh yes comparison yes i was saying i'll go back here we go louisiana sage traveled thousands of miles away 
and here we have local sage you see the difference I pick that and it takes ages to come back again in fact I had sage all along these gaps here and I think the rabbits have taken them something has taken them they haven't just died off it's very very unusual uh, but they don't seem to like it so what else have we got more red red oak there I, I didn't realize I'd actually gone mad on some mad on oaks but that's a good thing nothing wrong with having oaks we have a healthy quince tree here well, it's still quite small no quinces It'll be a while yet and here we have now here we have an oak and I forget is it a home oak I'll have to look at my catalog here this is already changing color and it has a unique color uh, because it goes from the green to the copper color before it goes red so we'll be watching that because it's going through a color change nearly to the end here more balm uh, an apple tree with no apples and we're pretty much coming to the end uh, we still have some cowslip seeds here uh, let them to do their thing when they want to do it and spread cowslips are really good here and I go back through the tunnel here and there's the fire pit that we use when there's visitors and we have the water font to borrow one there so that's an updated walk around the labyrinth and goodness me did I spend 22 minutes on that so here we go that is the Karakrori tree labyrinth and the sun has 